Once you have finished designing and testing your LTE-based implementation in Simulink, you may want to test it out running on a hardware prototype with Live I.O. To get started, make sure you have downloaded and installed the Communication System Toolbox Support Package for Xilinx Zinc-based radios, as shown here. This supplies everything you need to target these kits. We will use the LTE HDL Toolbox Cell Search and MIB Recovery Reference application with a couple modifications for prototyping on hardware. The first noticeable change from the reference application that ships with the product is that the hardware model has a lot more I.O. The additional input allows for more control over the testing and operation of the chip when it's running on the board. For instance, you can select whether to use a waveform from the input. On the hardware, it will be over the air, while in Simulink it would be generated by LTE System Toolbox or use a waveform stored internally in a lookup table which would be stored in a RAM on the FPGA. And this start select signal controls whether to use this internally generated start pulse or to use a control signal that comes from the software. We have also built out the functionality that will be generated as software to run on the ARM processor. There's the control mechanism along with some software to parse the MIB data and then send the information through a UDP link for display on the host. The last major change we've made to the reference application is to add a register bank to store the valid MIB data. This will only update with new valid data or a system reset, so what gets written out of the hardware side will only be the most recent valid MIB data. The way the hardware and software communicate with each other is through memory mapped registers, which are memory locations with predetermined addresses. HDL Coder's IP core generation workflow lets you assign the hardware I.O. to either pins on the chip or to the Zinx AXI registers. Each device board combination has specific pin configurations and memory map addresses. These are defined in what's called a reference design, which your hardware algorithm will plug into. The reference design for this kit is all set up as part of the hardware support package. So we can just bring up the HDL workflow advisor and select IP core generation and this platform as our target. The reference design info is all pre-populated with the right settings. This next step is where we map the I.O. to the pins or AXI registers. The right hand column then fills in the appropriate physical address information from the reference design. Then we can generate the HDL code and the surrounding IP core mapping and that generates an IP core report which documents this mapping. From here, we can then automatically create the Vivado project and the driver models that the software side will need in order to communicate with the hardware. Generating the bitstream takes a while, so we can set up the software model. HDL Coder's IP core generation creates the drivers that the software can use to communicate with the hardware. In Simulink, the software model looks like it's talking to the MIB algorithm, but it's really just calling these AXI drivers. Then we have the UDP communication mechanism to communicate the results back to the host. And we've built out the controller a bit, adding the capability to scan a frequency range rather than just specifying a center frequency of a known tower. This range is specified using the mask parameters. To program this to the arm, we make sure the configuration parameters are properly set. We're going to use external mode here so we can adjust some parameters on the fly during simulation. Then you can click Deploy to Hardware to build it on the ARM on the device connected to your system. Here it is running live on the board, starting by using the internally stored waveform. Then we can toggle it to use live over the air signals. Finally, starting up the UDP connection shows the captured MIB information. So by using this support package for the specified hardware kits, you can pretty easily test out your LTE-based application using live over-the-air signals.